Hi, my name is Michael Booker, and welcome to my solo exhibition, Godspeed, at Morton Fine Art in Washington, D.C. This show, Godspeed, was influenced a lot about by the quilts uh, from the Underground Railroad and the quilts of the women of Chief Bend, Alabama. And so, as you can see here, we'll be able to look around the gallery, but I wanted to start with just talking about some of my work and get a chance to let you know what I was thinking and what I was trying to do when we created this body for Godspeed. This work here to my right and to my left, it's actually two pieces of work that I made from a previous body of work, but they heavily inspire what I'm doing with this show. Here, in Show Me the Wisdom in Your Movements, in terms of I'm talking about quilts, I'm using these quilts as signposts and vehicles for figures that's on a journey. And this journey is a uh, state of uh, people trying to get to a better place and better than themselves, trying to escape from where they are currently. And so in this piece, one of the pieces that really influenced this whole body of work, you see down here with the triangles down here, that pattern that you see is called a flying east pattern. And so during the Underground Railroad, they used quilts to hide different messages in to the traveling slaves as they were traveling, to try to hide it from everybody else so they can identify. So this particular pattern, the flying east pattern, they use it to try to tell the slaves to make sure to follow the birds that they're flying north. And so I wanted to incorporate that in here. And then you also can see in our hair, and our braids right here, is also in the shape of a bird, which is in that bird that I modeled after, it's called the bird of paradise. So I wanted her to try to follow this bird, or follow, follow in her own wisdom, to try to get to that utopia that she's trying to go to. And so these two pieces, again, they really kind of started and jumped off uh, this whole body of work. I'm gonna move over here to the other side of the gallery now to kind of talk about the quilts a little bit more. Oh, here's this quilt. And so this quilt here is a quilt that my mother and I made together uh, over Christmas holidays of 2019. Went home with over the span of five days. Uh, we made this quilt together from start to finish. And this was the first quilt that I had made, full-size quilt that I had made um, from start to finish. It's a piece of front and back. And it, and it was modeled after a lot of like the cheese bins quilts, the crazy uh, strip quilts that were making. And I wanted to have that expense of actually making the quilt myself since this all was modeled after uh, quilting in the history of quilting. And this piece here you see in front of the quilt, let me crash it for a moment. You can see that her hair here is now trying to turn into like a tidal wave. And as she's kind of on her journey traveling by water, she the environment itself is starting to turn into her. And so one thing I want to think about like as they're on this journey, it's not necessarily just a geographic location they're trying to get to like a utopia that only three people get to because of geography, but more so when you think about it as like a state of mind or a state of being. And so like their journey can be inward, trying to embed themselves. So the environment starts to become themselves. And so we not necessarily we may not necessarily be seeing a, a physical title, but more so a projection of her inner consciousness and what her feelings are and what her thoughts are. And so she may think about ways she can embed herself in whatever situation that she's in. And these ideas, they're not anything new. Um, a lot of this was inspired uh, with hip hop as well. And so, like, the idea of like trying to better yourself in this state of mind of living came from this group called Pity Mob. And, and I've been kind of mixing clips, samples, hip hop, and all those things together like, for this work. You can see in this piece here, the thickest, we have a figure perched up top high as a lookout. As people are on this journey, he is incorporated into the quilt, into the environment, and a lookout or a guide for everybody that's traveling through. Over here, we have another piece that you can see. There's multiple quilt patterns kind of collaged together with the hexagons and some other quilt patterns that's all in here together. So collage of quilts into quilts. And another thing with this piece and a few other pieces, I was taking drawings that I had previously done before, and some that didn't work well, like they weren't good enough, so I cut them up and started to reuse parts of them to put them back together. Um, and so just with the nature of the books, because you're usually using like old fabrics and work clothes and tape and things like that to put together. I wanted to use old drawings to put them together to make a uh, new piece out of them too. So this one about 50 at the time, but wanted to have this strong figure camouflage to a quilt kind of with a side eye looking at you, um, but also trying to help you on your way um, on this journey. And 
as I move to these two larger pieces in the middle, right here, uh, fruit of my fruits, and in the time, I want to have, I want to think about like who are they trying to embed themselves for? These people are on a journey, why are they trying to get better? What are their situations? And I'm thinking about like, the next generation, who they're going for, their children. So we have a mother and daughter, and a mother and son, both on this path, um, camouflaged into the books, like on their way. And so with all these pieces that I made, I really thought about the journey and how they were moving. So most of the most of the figures here, you see they usually turn to the side, facing toward the left, as they're all kind of like in a line on their way. But I wanted to do something a little bit different with this one, Fruit of Our Fruits. The person that you see in here, um, she, I wanted to model it after a specific person that I, that I knew, someone that helped me a lot when I was first getting my start. Um, when I moved up here to get my start as an artist, she believed in some of the work that I was doing, even if I didn't believe it in myself. And she really helped me a lot. And so I actually modeled the, the figure in here after her to kind of just commemorate like, what she did for me here. As I move over, you can see both this piece here, and there's another one on the other pillar on the other side. There are these two figures facing each other. And you can see the quilt patterns that intersect or combine. Um, if you see them close, it goes from one face to the other. It shows connectivity between these two figures moving like on this journey. Then we'll move over to this corner. You can see this in this little man on it. Uh, another piece only he says is that I wanted to actually, in the creation of this piece, this was, I took a picture of myself right after I made the quilt with my mother. We went outside and I threw it on, like, on my back. Uh, and had it wearing like a cape almost. And in, in that picture that I took with that kind of influenced this, this piece right here. But I just want to have this another figure on, on this journey, on this way looking out. But on the side, you can see like there's his shadow coming over here. And this shadow is with him. But instead of making like a dark shadow, I want to kind of think about another guy or another spirit that's on the journey with him as well. So it's like he's never alone. There's always something else still trying to guide him on this path. These two smaller pieces that you can see here, I just want to be his son kiss child. Um, he was some of the last pieces that I made for this show. And so for both of these pieces, I really want to make um, some portraits that really focus on these quilt patterns a little bit more in the figures themselves. So especially like with son, son kiss child, this one here, I wanted to take all the scraps or the remnants of other drawings that I did the, the scrap paper that I would mix colors on and just practice things on, take, I took those papers and glued them together. So it's all these marks already on the paper, and then I made this drawing on top of that. So if you zoom in closely, you can see little small areas where you can see the previous marks in her face. And I kind of think about those as like scars that kind of healed over time, kind of show her strength. There was a, a large part of me wanted to cover those things up, but after a while, I left them because I, I like the residual memories that they kind of left behind. Hopefully this has been good to give you a, my ideas on this show and making the show a hell out of fun making it. Um, feel free to look around and go in on any of the pieces um, and just let me know what you think. Thank you and Godspeed.